Hello, hello, this is your girl Nina from Breakable Strong Woman coming to you on this Sunday evening just to say hello and also to talk to you all for a minute because I, I, I just don't get what's going on in this world, y'all. I was just watching a video of two grown women with children fighting in McDonald's. Black women. And it's a man in the back saying, let them fight. Do y'all know how distasteful that is for our race, for grown folks to behave like that and somebody be coordinate, degrading their own people, making a mockery out their own people to either go viral or think this is shit is cool to behave that way? And y'all wonder why I talk about women. Let me tell you why I talk about women. I'm a woman, so I can talk about women. When I see mothers talking about they about that life, want to have meetups, this year, y'all, now I'm not even going to say this year, since I've been back in Grand Rapids, all I've been seeing is dysfunctional ass black women. If it don't apply, let it fly. But this just dysfunctional black women on the internet keeping up more shit than kids. This is what I don't like about black women. Y'all always want to show that you about that life. You don't care about your your uh your career, your children looking at you. You don't care about your rights. You don't care about voting. You don't care about the law. You just want to prove that you Billy Badass. What are you getting out of that? Showing your children dysfunction. And you know where that dysfunction come from? Your history, what your mama them did. My family tough, and half of them probably dead or in jail. What do you get out of being Billy Badass? My daughter has experienced nothing but, damn it, crazy drama for the last couple of years over some dude that she didn't know very much about, that she tried to get to know. Come to find out he wasn't about shit. So she left him alone, and I shouldn't even talk to the dude. These women, two different women that both like him, and they beefing with each other too, over somebody that's like 12 years younger than them. One of these women is in her late 30s, almost 40 years old. Got a child at 16, and you arguing about a 21-year-old guy. Talking about what you gonna do this summer. Y'all wonder why black women get dogged. This is why I say this shit because I see it on a daily basis. I told y'all I well, I already just resolved my case. Never been in trouble in my life. Y'all know I do Unbreakable Strong Woman. If y'all been following me, I didn't see several videos about the situation I got in. I went to a young lady trying to resolve a conflict between two women and was ambushed. So... She got cut on the leg because she ran up on something. Nobody chased her. Somebody, just tell me this. Am I wrong? If you go, and I ain't just saying to nobody's house. I was across the street. And I asked the person that I thought was going to be a mediator to help me. Can I speak to him for a moment? He said yes. As he approached my vehicle to talk to me, and I'm thinking he's going to talk with some sense because he seemed like a logical man. She comes storming out the house, across from her house, across the street. I'm sorry, y'all. My door, sorry about that. See, this is why we talking about Apple phones, all this overrated. If you ain't got no Apple, you poor. My Apple ain't on shit, I'm sorry. Every time I get on my Apple phone, this happens. But anyway, I digress. Somebody run across the street, open your door, jump in, attack your child. Gorging her face off, you think they cutting her on top of her, and they 200 and some pounds. Then you watch the guy that said you could talk to him, pulling your daughter hair, choking her with the seatbelt, pulling her hair out. Your daughter got stitches in the bottom of her stomach, just recently beat cancer. What would you do? I just wonder, what would any of you do? That's all I want to know. But guess what? The law... Our law, the United States led of the free, and we fought the right people. The prosecutor supposed to prosecute the bad folks. I got prosecuted. I got prosecuted because the aggressor got hurt. She ran up on something and got hurt. Now I'm the criminal. Never been in trouble in my life, but she have. 
That's like if somebody walk in your house and you beat the dog shit out of them and you go to jail because you protecting your home. But see, that's the law. You know what I'm saying? And I guess because I happen to be a brown girl and she's a Mexican. See, that's what it was. If it was two black women, you know what the prosecutor would have told her? You shouldn't have opened her car door and jumped in. Then she bragged about it. She bragged about it on the stand. Yeah, I went to trial. It was a hung jury. I went to trial. She bragged on it. Let them know what she did. And they won't prosecute her at all. They won't prosecute her. They took our rights completely away. And I went to school for criminal justice. I thought this system worked. But I see it don't. But my point of the matter that I'm making is women... Why are women behaving like this? You gonna tell me you don't have no patience, no understanding to talk as a woman? If somebody coming to you as a woman, no, no malice, not coming about that life, just say, can I talk to you? Can we talk? And you come out the house in vengeance and want to fight? And your dude jump in? And it's two females? And y'all think this okay? Y'all the ones raising these kids. See, I don't fight because I just don't have that kind of heart. I'm too old to be fighting somebody. I don't bother people. I stay in my own lane. I be invited to events that I don't go to because I don't like conflict. And I notice more and more that I try this unbreakable strong woman thing I'm trying to do. To show, and that's why it's called unbreakable strong woman. Because I want women to know that all the things we go through in life, all the dysfunction we face, all the hardship and struggle, being single parents, some of y'all been raped, some of y'all been dogged out, some of y'all have cracked mama and daddies. All the things we go through, we still unbreakable because we still maintain. And this not working for me. Because... All I'm getting is backlash. Most women say I'm stupid. They tired of hearing my mouth. They don't like my videos, but they keep watching me. So I, I appreciate that. That's free advertisement. The more you talk about me, the more you marketing me. So thank you. But y'all not appreciating what I do. Y'all rather for me to come on here and say something about violence. I get more reaction off violence than I do making y'all laugh. Because when I make y'all laugh, you know what you say? Nina's stupid. She childish. Y'all see that dumbass Nina? Do y'all know when I had my entertainment business? It was called Pretty Girl Entertainment, ENT. It was strippers. We had dancers. We was on a professional level. We had girls trying to pay their way through college. We had some professional women. Then when I found out we had women doing other things, I cut it out. I stopped it because I wasn't going to the feds for nobody. But that was my goal, to have professional women entertaining. Do y'all know girls from Grand Rapids hated on me so bad? You know what they did? They was calling all the way out to L.A. To some friends I know out to L.A. Talking about my business nonstop. Because this friend didn't have no Facebook. But he happened to know every move I made. Because these particular women was calling him, dogging me out. The same women I watch, watch my Facebook page every day. So I end up blocking them. Because I'm like, damn, you ain't got nothing better to do but report my shit to somebody that I don't give a damn about. What he gonna do? Last time I checked, my daddy was in the ground over on Kalamazoo Street. I don't gotta report to nobody. But this is what black women do. They dig and search and find. And if y'all are doing this to other women, if y'all are doing this to other women, I know what men go through. Because I didn't got a little taste of how women act, and I'm not even a man. This mouth, that attitude, I'll be the bitch ass. Then y'all, what's so sad? Y'all don't even let a brother move on if he wanted to. A brother can tell you he done with you, and y'all still want to fight the girl he with. Cutting tires, causing conflict with this brother. And don't get me wrong, I know it's some crazy ass brothers out here. They on the news every day for killing females. But then them tender ones, I don't have no respect for them kind of brothers. Because I just watched a YouTube girl get murdered. She was 30, the nigga was 48 years old. And he's in love with this girl to the point he killed her. Because she didn't want him no more. That's some tender old weak ass shit. I don't deal with dudes like that. I ain't even talking about these dudes that shooting these women and stuff. I don't even give them no kind of... Uh, nothing. I don't even want to deal with them on no level. But I'm talking about these women. We run the show. We the mothers of the earth. We raising these kids. And this is what you showing them. This is what y'all showing them. 
Did y'all just see the video I posted of the girl cut her her son head like George Jefferson? She about the third mother that done this to her son for him being um disobedient. Do she really think that's a form of discipline? Degrading your child on Facebook? It was a mother did that to her daughter because her daughter had sex. She got on Facebook and showed her daughter dirty underwear. And told all the little boys, this is what y'all dealing with, this nasty heifer. Did she, did she really think that was a form of discipline? Or was that mental abuse? Do you know stuff like that will make your child commit suicide? But see, this is how they handle things because they don't know better because they ain't been taught better. That ain't how you discipline a child. If you caught your son smoking weed, why you ain't going to phone with his daddy or his uncle? Let one of these men handle him. Take him to a rehab and, or, or a morgue and let him see what happens when you do drugs. Take him to a prison system and let him visit some of them brothers that's doing life. That's how you scare your son. You don't make him go to school with a George Jefferson haircut so everybody can laugh at him and the little boy go smoke crack next time because he can't handle what he going through in school being bullied every day. Because do you know that's going to stay with him for the rest of his life? Even when he a grown man, they're going to be talking about his haircut. He'll grow up and hate his mama. But this is what you mothers do. Not only that, y'all talk about y'all kids' fathers to your children. Your daddy ain't shit. Uh, he mess with all kind of bitches. It's certain things your kids shouldn't even know. Like I said, I never seen my father out of my home till the day he died. If my mom and dad went through something, I never saw it. Ever. Now, I heard them have a little disputes. But when I walked in the room, they both got quiet. They didn't want me to see nothing but love in my home. This is why I share so much love, because I know what love looked like. My parents was married almost 60 years. I told y'all, my mom had me at 40. My dad was 42. I'm the baby. So all I knew was old school, down south, southern love. My mom would cook Sunday dinner every day. She was a stay-home mom. My dad worked every single day. He was on his job over 45 years. One, he had other jobs. But that one, he was with 45 years. We never was on the system. I never seen a Medicaid or food stamps. My daddy said he wished a white man would feed his family. So I had that kind of family. My dad was in World War II. You know what I used to get teased about in school? Y'all remember history class? People used to be like, Nina, is that your daddy on page 20? That's what I used to get treated, you know, teased about because my dad was old. But see, they didn't understand. That was the best upbringing ever because my daddy and them had seen it all. My parents went through segregation. So I look at life differently because I was schooled very well. I was schooled very well by my aunts and uncles and my, my parents because they went through the worst times of life. I have an old soul, so I don't look at things like a lot of other people look at it. I see love before I see hate. I was raised in the same church for 45 years. We grew up in the Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church. My mother was in the senior choir. We went every Sunday. The Mayberries had their own role in church. So I was raised different. So if I come off like I do, it's because that's the kind of love I have. And I'm genuine with mine. When I'm talking to y'all, it comes from a good place. I ain't on here trying to start no beef. I ain't on here trying to dog y'all out. I ain't on here trying to disrespect nobody. I, I'm all about love and understanding and growth. That's why I have no understanding how y'all can, you all can get on social media and brag about the money you getting and the houses you making and the business you doing and you not sharing your knowledge with not even the kids do you know if half these young men knew they can get it like you get it they wouldn't be out there doing what they doing if they had a little bit of hope if you know real estate and you grab up some of these little dudes and say, let me show you how to get some money the right way, they will do it. But you know what y'all say? Oh, no, these kids ain't going to listen. Did you try? Did you try? One more experience I'm going to share with y'all. My sons had these little bad boys. I ain't even say bad. Um, lost friends. They was lost. They was going through a lot at home. They'd been through a lot in their life, so they was angry. So they was spazzed out. They was carrying guns. They wanted to act a fool. So I got them one by one on different days. I would just get one of them and, and, and walk and talk to them. One little boy, as soon as I started talking to him, one of the, bad, the baddest one supposed to be in the group, 
Soon as I started talking to him, and I told him he was a king, that he could do anything. And I said, if nobody ever told you they love you, I'm telling you right now, son. I don't want to see you dead. You can be anything you want to be. And he started pouring his heart out, telling me what he desired to be. And I said, why you ain't doing it? I didn't think I could. I said, well, I know you can. Do you know that boy started crying to me? Do you know he poured out his heart and started crying to me? Because I got him by himself. And he became a kid again. He seen the mother in me. And every time he see me to this day, he would say, Miss Nina, I love you. Because you showed me love my own mama never showed me. That's all they need is somebody to believe in them. But see, y'all write these kids off. Ain't nobody got time for these kids. They the shooters. They the... Because don't nobody believe in them. Y'all my age, y'all had the big brother and sister program. Y'all has we had summer jobs that we had to do. You know, we had teachers like Mr. Joseph, Mr. Chamberlain, Miss Copeland, Miss Noah. We had these teachers that didn't let us fail. They would knock our ass out and take us home and tell our parents, and we getting knocked out again. See, now the teachers are sitting in the classroom to get a paycheck. These kids, the only thing they're going to school for is to screw, smoke weed, uh, get high, and talk about prom. And who got what iPhone? I look at it this way. If I went to school without a phone, why these kids can't? Do you know they get talked about if they ain't got the latest phone and they ain't got no damn jobs? I blame the black mama because the black mama raising them. Y'all more concerned about your kids looking good than the substance that's in them. Do they have a fear of God? Do they, do they have any goals? You ask your kids what their goals are. No, you're too busy wanting them to look like money and you on section eight and don't got a pot to piss in or the window to throw it out of. You know, how many times we used to laugh at the Mexicans? How many times we used to laugh at, uh, the Africans? You know what I mean? When they used to all stay together. Oh, you going to live like some Mexicans. Guess what? The Mexicans, the ones got the businesses in all the houses now. Because they knew the shit. They knew we got to stay together. We're going to help each family every year get out of here and get their own. Then we're going to help another family. And then we all going to be on. That's what Mexicans was on when we was laughing at them. But know what black people do? They get their dang old Section 8. They get their income taxes. And we damn it ghetto rich. Oh, I ain't letting no nigga stay with me. You let your family member go to a shelter because you don't want them on your damn art van, uh, value city ass furniture. You think your shit is too high and mighty. Ain't nobody going to be on my shit and the government paying for it. And the ones that own some shit, it's, you still ain't owning no shit. I seen a post today, y'all, that said, would you talk, that's females, would you talk to a poor man? Do y'all know how many females said no? Do y'all know how many females that's right here in Grand Rapids who said, hell no, nah, no. And I'm looking at them and I said, I responded. I said, hold the hell up. Damn it, I'm poor. So how the hell I'm going to judge another poor person when I, I'm poor my damn self? So if I meet a dude that's trying and he ain't got just as much as me, we can come up together. Because I'm a grinder. If I got somebody willing to grind with me, oh, we going to make it do what it do. But all these girls who drive in these damn cars because they got Section 8 or they got a little job making $20, $25 an hour. And most of y'all walk around these nurse outfits and all y'all got is a certificate. And y'all think y'all a Dr. Doolittle or some damn body. And y'all too good for people now. I went and talked to a poor man. You poor. How you expect somebody to have more than what you have and, and they're supposed to kiss your butt and you ain't got shit? Why would a rich man want to give you anything? This is what I understand, women. Why y'all think y'all deserve a rich man? Because you got a cookie. Is that, that, that's it? That, this shit don't make sense to me. I, I done seen so many women. If a nigga can't do this and that and this for me, he can't talk to me. Girl, what do you have to offer? What are you bringing to the table besides government assistance? Because that shit shut down because it will when Donald Trump get his ass back in there. What you going to do? You going to wish you did have a poor nigga. You going to wish you did have anybody work at McDonald's. Because it's shit going to come to an end. Y'all ain't paying attention. Two bedrooms going for $2,200 right now. <laughs> Y'all ain't watching what's going on. Y'all ain't seen these a rounds out here begging? Y'all didn't see the news when they said half these uh, Americans with families living in tents? Y'all ain't seeing that? Y'all still
still living like it, uh, everything Gucci. And it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. They messing with the food. They messing with the water. You're going to have to live on somebody's floor. For all you high end, I'm, I'm famous, I'm rich ass, ghetto, damn it, rich Negroes, y'all better wake up. The Mexicans was doing it right the whole time while we was laughing at them. They own this shit. I know rich Africans. They will work in the United States and send money back home and say Americans are stupid. You know why they say we stupid? Because we get money and we get $500 hair weeds. We get our nails done every week. Ain't going nowhere. Nails now $85. Getting them dug, getting your feet done like you're Cardi B. You would think some of these girls Cardi B going to get $7,500 BBLs and don't even own your home? What? You paying a car note, but you just spent $10,000 for a booty. And y'all think y'all got your shit together, man. There's so many mentally ill black folks. And y'all don't want to own it. How many of you right now can say, I don't start drama. I don't get on and argue with nobody. I don't cuss out my kids' teachers. I'm not arguing with no woman about a man. I'm not sitting here saying I hate men because I chose the wrong man all my life because something mentally wrong with me, so I kept choosing the wrong men. I'm not saying I hate men because of that. I'm not a single mom with four or five kids without a husband because I'm fine. It's the men. We did it wrong. You go through your rich white neighborhoods. Them white girls married, man. They stay at home moms and they men got careers. When I lived in a nice area, do y'all know all them women around me, them people would get married, right? And buy these big old houses. And I used to ask my neighbors, why y'all buying that big house just y'all? Because we going to fill it up with our kids. They go to college first. They get married. Then they have their babies. Black folks, we do it wrong, but y'all got too much pride to say that we do it wrong. Y'all ready to argue and fight. This is why our homes are dysfunction. This is why our kids messed up, because we bringing young black boys into this world by men that, I ain't going to say men, males that don't even know how to be a father, because how you going to be a father if you never had one? You expect this brother to be a father, he don't even know who his daddy is. You can meet a brother right now because he cute and he can tell you my grandma raised me because both my parents was on crack. I don't know neither one of my parents. My mama was in and out of my life. My daddy been in prison all his life. My grandma had to raise me. There's a whole lot of people got that story. And guess what you would do? You would make him your baby daddy. And then get mad because he don't know how to be one. Then you say black men ain't no good when he just told you he don't know his own damn daddy. So you think he going to be responsible? But y'all ain't hearing me, though. I'll be talking stupid. So y'all don't like no real ass shit. Y'all want to hear a lie. Y'all want to hear a lie. We all poor. We all poor. For all the 400 and something that watch me and don't say nothing, you poor too. You know why you poor too? I don't give a damn if you make $100,000 a year, you're still poor. You ain't got no money because that ain't no money nowadays. It's like 60000 now. You're still poor. Robin Peter to pay Paul. If you on my page watching me, critiquing me, your ass is poor. Because rich people ain't on Facebook. They doing money moves. Rich people ain't got time for Facebook. So when I start making money, y'all gonna have to see me on YouTube and other places where I'm getting money at. I'm not gonna waste my time. So stop thinking you got some shit because you just got your income tax girl and bought another car that's gonna break down in eight months. Stop, stop thinking you got some shit because your rent paid and, and you got some nice furniture in there that you think you the shit. Now you better than your family members. So let me speak on that real quick about family. Fake ass family. Do you know your family can live in the same city with you? Your family can be right around you. Don't call you. Don't check on you. Don't invite you to shit. They'll watch you too and don't respond. Because you have the same bloodline don't mean nothing. Keep your circle small. See, people think I'm stuck up. People think I'm bougie because I keep my circle small. I cut off females years ago. I have not one, not one female friend. 
Not one female got my number if they don't have the same blood I have. Not one. You know why? Because I'm like, every female friend I ever had was some bullshit. They want to know your business or they go tell your business or they go talk about you. No, I don't need that. I came in this world by myself and I'm going to leave by myself. If you're not helping me put some money in my pocket and making my life better, what the hell I'm entertaining you for? I don't need your help to go out and enjoy myself because you supposed to be my friend. And the ones y'all grew up with, I hear y'all say this. I had the same friend for 30 years. Do, y do you not know this? The friend that you had when you was 8 years old is not the same person right now. You used to know that person. People have grown, they have changed, they have went through things, and y'all still talking about that's your best friend. Get the hell out of here. And how many times your best friend had crossed you? And y'all can't say never, because you know what? Ain't nothing new under the sun. If Judas crossed Jesus, you know your friend gonna cross you. He had, everybody got a Judas. See, my Judas is just watch me, but I don't entertain them. I have learned my lesson. I keep my Judas afar. Stay your ass over there. Watch me and do whatever you want to do, but I'm going to keep doing me. I'm going to keep living, even though the world is trying to break me down from the law to whatever else I try to do. Because when I was in the South and I'm doing the same thing I'm doing now, those Southern women appreciated me. I got invited to churches and everything to speak. They appreciated me. Here, you get no love. Somebody can know resources and you call them. Could you help me um get some gigs to speak? Oh, no, nah, I can't do that. You know why? Because they think you're going to take their shine. They think you're going to outdo them. They think if you speak, that somebody going to see what's inside of you that's real. And it's coming from a deep down from the pit of your soul. They, I like her. They think you're going to make more money than them. This is why people don't help people. Because they want to be the only ones shining. Only black folks. Only black folks. You talk to some Mexicans, I guarantee you. The business they didn't start and stuff, I guarantee you family members helped them do it. Africans, family member helped them do it. I promise you that. You go to a family member right now, you know got it. And say, hey, I'm about to get put out. I just need $800 to save my place. They'll let your ass go homeless. And then, not only that, they'll talk about you. They laugh at you. They love your downfall. But I be talking crazy, though. But I'm just sick of it, man. Everywhere I look, I see these dysfunctional-ass black women. And I'm talking about our black women because y'all the ones raising the kids. Y'all the ones raising the kids. See, y'all don't want to take credit for the little badass kids. And I'm going to call it what it is. My mother used to always say, don't call kids bad. These some badass kids. These kids don't have no fear of God. They don't have no respect. They're fucking crazy. And the reason being is because their mamas didn't whoop their ass. They're too busy putting Jordans and iPhones in their hand and no substance in them. They don't even know God. You know why? Because mama don't even know God. Half of y'all atheists. Y'all the same mothers that run around saying, it's okay to be whatever you want to be, even though this an abomination of hell, this a free world. I love my kids anyway. I don't care if I'm sending my child to the pit of hell. I won't tell my child the truth. I'm going to let my child go to the pit of hell because the world said it's okay. Let these fathers... Start disciplining these kids, especially those boys. Even if you don't like him and he don't like you. This has nothing to do with you, mama. This has something to do with these kids that's killing themselves out here. Ain't y'all tired of hearing about these little kids dying? I had to just go off my, my son's dad today. Because he had the audacity. The audacity. To say what my son doing wrong when my son is trying. See, I know my son ain't doing his best. I know he's not living up to his potential. But every day I'm encouraging him saying, you a king, son, you a champ. Y'all see me on there encouraging my son, you a champ. I'm going to keep feeding you good things until you get it. Now, if you don't, I got to live with that, but I did the best I could. But how dare you degrade my son when your ass was in and out of prison all his life? Off and on drugs all his life. And you going to say what he ain't doing when you didn't help him do shit? How dare you? My son, 24. Guess what his daddy was at 24? In the penitentiary. But you sit here and say what he need to do when you never done it. 
And that's what I like about some fathers. Oh, they need to do this and that. Nigga, have you showed them? How you gonna say what he need to do when you never showed him? All my son wanted his daddy to do is go in the gym with him. Because his daddy got them hands and he's a trained boxer. Do you know he tell my son, nigga, you need to stop thinking about boxing and get you a job. Nigga, you... And who called his son a nigga? Ignorance. But see, that's my problem. Mm-hmm. Choosing, choosing him to be his father. That, that was my fault. Because <laughs> I didn't have that kind of father. And thank God, my father was there a little bit before he died for my sons. So they seen what a real man is. They know what it is. Both my boys love their children unconditionally. They have went through mental and physical abuse against women doing stuff to them. Just to be in the presence of their kids. Because they did not want to be like their fathers. This is why my kids endure a lot of shit they endure because they don't want to be like their fathers. And I've watched somebody tear my sons down. And, and, and one of them, he, he loves so hard that he just go through mental abuse and just abuse, abuse. He got marks all over his body from this girl. She didn't did the most to him. And as soon as one day he reached back and she got hit in the eye with his elbow, he went to jail. She called the police, screamed bloody murder, ran outside like somebody was trying to kill her. Her whole family got mad. But her family didn't get mad when you almost stabbed my son through his heart. When you bleached all his clothes. When you cut his hair. When you burnt him with an iron. When you did all this shit that he didn't call the police on you. But as soon as he barely touched you. Oh, my son, the worst thing in the world. Do y'all not know that women love their sons too? When y'all doing men wrong, but y'all got sons. What would y'all do if somebody doing that to y'all son? For real, what would you do if somebody beating the shit out your son, mentally tearing him down? Would you like that woman? So y'all want all this respect and want a man to kiss your ass, want to beat a man into submission, but let that happen to your son. You be ready to kill. Remember, that boy has, that man has a mother. We love our kids too. We watched him in Pampers and grow up. We raised him to be the man he is. And if you don't like him and he ain't living up to your standards, leave him the hell alone. Get the fuck on. And like I said, the shit I go through dealing with females, I know why men don't want to deal with women. I know. Shit, I'm tired of women and I don't even like women. I argue with women every day like I'm sleeping with y'all. I ain't even sleeping with y'all asses and got to argue with y'all asses. So I know what people's homes are like. Bottom line, get mad at me, black woman. Black women are horrible. Y'all ready to be about that life faster than these dudes are. And a lot of dudes fighting because of y'all asses. A lot of y'all fighting because of y'all asses. Y'all out here fighting each other and dudes killing each other behind a big mouth ass woman who instigated some shit. Not only that, y'all making hoeing legal now all over the internet. I ain't got to deal with him. I got too many options. It's legal hoeing. Y'all on Instagram, Facebook selling ass. What y'all call it? Somebody flying me off of 5000 You a hoe. Y'all forgot that it exists? If you sleeping with somebody for money, what is that? A prostitute. Then y'all want to say, I ain't getting no BBL for no man. Girl, you getting BBLs because ass sale, sex sales. That's the biggest money maker in the world. When ain't nothing else selling, ass is going to sell. Excuse my French, I'm being real right now. So that's why y'all going to get the asses because y'all know men want it. Women want it too. A woman to buy it now. Y'all ain't getting that big booty to sit at home and be a good mama. Quit playing with me. So y'all telling me y'all spending $7,000 to go get a big ass just to walk around and say, I don't want no man. No, you want them to look at it. Oh, I forgot. And when they look at it, what you do? You call the police on that Me Too shit. He sexual harassed me. You done threw the ass all in his face. Butt naked at the club, bending over. As soon as the Negro touch you, he going to jail. Why do you think R. Kelly in jail? People throwing ass at him all day long. Their mamas knew what they was doing. They was selling their kids. But y'all don't see that part. Y'all, the woman is the victim. They the victim. Y'all never mention what they mamas was doing. If I take my 16-year-old girl right now to an R. Kelly concert, and then I leave her with R. Kelly in the studio and say, help her make some music, Mr. Kelly. I'm leaving her in your hands because you a musical genius. 
Do you not know that I know eventually one of, them, one of them grown men, if it ain't R. Kelly, gonna mess with my cute little 16-year-old? She's so petite and cute, got long legs, pretty as pie. Her hair so pretty. You don't think one of them, them older men gonna see this little cute girl that smell good every day and got talent ain't gonna want to sleep with her? I gotta be a damn fool to think if I leave my daughter with some grown men, they ain't gonna do nothing to her. But y'all blaming R. Kelly, even though he's responsible for what he's doing. But they knew if he did it. Y'all brighten this man off. We ain't got no proof. All oh, this is hearsay. 30 years later, you're going to say, he, he mentally tore me down. Black women, he mentally messed me up. I said, shit, is that easy? Let me call on Richard, uh, James, Tony, A.D., uh, Robert, um, uh, Mir. Let me, let me make up some cases on these brothers and wait till they get some money and say they had me butt naked in the basement when I was 16 so I can get a lawsuit. Because that's what they did. It was not one police report against R. Kelly. Not one. Y'all go tell me all these big mouth ass girls. Y'all big mouth ass women now. Y'all go tell me these big mouth ass girls who like to start shit. They didn't go to school and tell nobody R. Kelly touched them. They tell no teacher. They tell their mama. They was enjoying getting new shoes and riding around with R. Kelly. He raping them, holding them in the closet. They ain't tell nobody. Y'all want me to believe that shit? Some of these teenage girls more experienced than grown ass women. Because they mama made them grown. Have y'all watched proms and, and the dresses and shit they send their kids off in? These girls dressing like they professional strippers. Titties out and everything. That couple that got killed on, um, last weekend on prom. God rest their soul. Guess what they mamas did? And I, I feel bad for them. Went out and rented them a Tesla. The boy's 17, she's 16. They clothes they had on had to be over $1,000. You send four teenagers off to prom, not even old enough to drink. And what do they do? They drink. Now he can't drive. He put the set, the 16 year old girl behind the wheel. What she do? A Tesla is a high end, expensive car that takes off. She didn't know how to handle that machine. She took off and went up under a semi truck and killed them. And the parents on there, oh my God, I don't know. D did you really believe some kids was going to be responsible on a Tesla? But y'all want them to look like money. Y'all want them to look rich to their friends. You want them to look better than their friends so you can get patted on the back. Did you see how, did you see how Shanae sent her daughter to prom, girl? She spent all that money. They did that shit. That's all y'all do it for. Do y'all know when we was younger, we had to get taken to dances. We had to get dropped off. We had either a limo taking us or our parents. We had a chaperone. We weren't just let loose into the world and y'all be back at 12. Hell no. Why y'all think I couldn't go to the free Nick? Because my mama wasn't playing that shit. You think she finna let her teenage daughter go to Atlanta? That now y'all got all these old women scared. I hope that movie, that video don't come out. Your mama shouldn't let you go to that shit. Because y'all know, freak Nick. Freak. Everybody down there doing whatever. Screwing whoever. That's why I say y'all might see somebody y'all look like on that documentary and say, oh, that's my daddy. Because they was getting pregnant and everything down there. Coming back with all kind of diseases and drunk, getting stranded. Because this, this irresponsible parents letting their teenage daughters go out to a free meet. That's why I said, um, what's his name? Keith Sweat. He better be scared. Keith Sweat slept with so many young girls. That's why he ain't sitting in Bar Kelly. Keith Sway used to have butt naked pool parties at the Freak Neek. He used to go get them young girls and bring them back to his house with jail, LaVert, and all of them. Sleeping with them young girls. He better hope to God that he ain't on one of them videos. Because he was doing all kind of Freak Neek shit. I was 19, 20, still living at home and had a curfew. My mom said, I don't give a damn if you 30. You got a curfew with my shit. Now, don't be hearing at 12. She wasn't the kind of mama to lock you out at 12. She going to snatch me in the house if I come in there at 2 o'clock. Did I tell you be in my goddamn house at, at 12? And I'm done with. My mother didn't play. And she wish I would have said a word. My mother used to take my car keys from me from my car. As long as you're in my house, you're going to follow my rules. That's how my mother was. If you're so grown, hit the bricks. Because you ain't going to be up in here doing that shit. 
My mother's kind of mother, she had Negroes scared to knock on my door call. They hear my mama voice, they're like, oh, shit, can, can I speak to Nina? My mama didn't play. And my daddy was so calm and laid back, he didn't have to say nothing. He was a man of little words, but don't get him heated, because he going there. But we don't have them kind of parents no more. We had a kind of parents, if they teach your call and say, little Johnny, um... Had his phone out and I took it. Bitch, what you take my son for phone for? That's an i five twenty five. I paid a thousand dollars. No, no, I ain't a thousand. I paid five thousand for the iPhone twenty five. Bitch, wait till I see you at the school. I'ma whoop your ass and the principal ass. Y'all don't go to little Johnny and say, What didn't I tell you don't take that phone to school? Now you ain't getting that phone back until you earn it. No, you don't do that. You don't go in little Johnny's room and check under his mattress to see do he got a pistol. You don't do that. You watch your kids pull up in front of your house and damn it, kids, and no, they ain't got no damn car. Never ask you, take me to the store real quick. No, they ain't got no damn car. And then you'll tell somebody, I'm going to call my son, bitch. My son about that life. Until he on that sidewalk, now you on the news crying. See, y'all don't want to hear the shit I got to say because I am not going to see her take up for black folks no more. I, I don't. I never have. We got our own issues. Y'all worried about uh, what the white man doing, blaming the white man when we can't even take care of each other. We can't even, damn it, patrol our own neighborhoods. We can't even keep our own kids in check. See, in Detroit, they doing that now. They got grown men walking around with shotguns up and down their streets, making sure nobody doing shit in Detroit. Before the police get there, they go handle it. Grand Rapids ain't doing that, and a lot of other cities not doing it. You know what y'all gonna do? Y'all gonna pull out y'all cell phone and hope you go viral. Y'all let one of them white folks slap the shit out of you. I can't believe he did that. Oh, Karen, this Karen, but a brother step in your gym shoes, you'll blow his head off. Self-hate, the Willie Lynch letter, the making of a slave, is still lasting over 400 years like he said. Make them hate they self. Make them kill each other and treat us like we're God. They'll kill each other before they kill us. And we the ones hanging their ass and making them starve. They starving because of us. But they so mad that they don't have no money. They killing each other. They rather feed a stranger than feed their own family. A father rather go buy him something to wear to make sure his kids got some shoes on their feet. Do you know my son father told me today, I ain't did too much because I'm trying to get myself together. Nigga, you 50. You almost dead. When you gonna have your life together? Do you kids gotta be on hold until you get your shit together? What if I would have done that? I'd be in jail for child neglect. Kids ain't gotta wait till you get your shit together. Before you let on open your legs, your shit supposed to be planned out. But we do it wrong. But y'all don't want to hear that, though. Because y'all ghetto rich. Y'all got the shit together. Fuck Nina. Nina ignorant. She don't know what the hell she talking about. I'm tired of Nina big ass mouth. She try to tell somebody how to be in a relationship when she ain't got one. That's how I can tell you. That's how I can tell you. That's like somebody driving down the damn street. And they turn the corner doing 50 and flip their car. Who can tell you about turning fast and flipping a car besides somebody that did it already? Somebody that never flipped their car can't say you're going to flip over a car because they don't know. But somebody that been through the shit can tell you, don't turn that corner like that because you're going to flip that car. Because I already flipped mine and I almost killed myself. How dare somebody say, how you going to tell me that when you flipped your car? Because I just flipped my goddamn car. That's how I can tell you. I can tell you what not to do in a marriage because I know what I did wrong. I can tell you uh, how to deal with no good dudes because I done dealt with some. I can tell you how to shut the hell up and be a submissive woman because I had to learn how to shut up and be a submissive woman. If I never been through shit, I couldn't tell you shit. Y'all rather for a, 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 a person in college just laying on somebody's sofa that don't know shit about life but book smart. You will listen to them first. Like that COVID shot. Y'all listening to doctors telling y'all what you should be doing, but they don't even know what the hell the COVID is. But grandma tell you, no, nah, baby, all you got to do is drink some turmeric, some ginger, 
some hot tea, some apple cider vinegar, that clear anything out. Grandma crazy. Grandma crazy. But grandma 90 years old. You ain't listening to grandma that's 90 years old. You listen to your doctor. Your oppressor. When have your oppressor cared about you? When? If your oppressor cared about you, wouldn't your black man be in the house? When he had made Section 8 for a family, that I'm making housing for black families to come together so these black kids can be raised right. No, they made Section 8 to remove the black man because they hate the black man. So they replaced the man with Section 8 medicated food stamps, and most black women sold them out. Because I, I the women I know, they would do anything to have their black fathers in the house. Baby, let's work and do it together. Fuck Section 8. Y'all want somebody dictating who can come in your house? Oh, you can only have company for two weeks. <laughs> they could. That's a control mechanism. They controlling. If if you if somebody come over your house, yo, you, that's like this. Your mama homeless, and they telling you if your mama come over here, you gonna lose those Section 8. Y'all to tell your mama you gotta go, mama, because I ain't losing my shit. The woman that bring you into the world. Instead of saying, Mama, you know what? It don't matter. We both can get a job and grind because I ain't going to let you be homeless. You never let me be homeless. Now, you ought to tell your mama to get the hell on. She be down at Mel Trotter. It's mama's left in nursing homes. Ain't nobody messing up my shit. Y'all crazy, man. I know this video a little long, but y'all need to hear some truth right now. I'm tired of black women doing the shit they doing, and they blaming everybody but they damn self. Going to get a degree, going to get a, a certificate to be a nurse, going to get more money, that's not fixing your life. I don't care what you driving, I don't care how you living. If you mentally messed up, you still ain't gonna be happy. Half y'all got good credit, living good, and miserable. Y'all land if y'all land up right now in y'all California King, probably on a five hundred dollar comforter, in some bonbons, drinking some pop, watching me talking shit by yourself. By yourself. Saying you don't want a man. No, it ain't that you don't want one, you can't keep one. Tell the damn truth. I don't want no man no more because I can't keep one. I don't know how to shut the hell up. I don't want to be submissive. I ain't gonna kiss a man ass. I can live without a man. So y'all saying God is a liar. That's what y'all saying, God a liar? Y'all the same ones that sit up in church every Sunday. But you tell me you can live without a man when God said, I, I, I gotta make Adam a, a helpmate because he messing it up. A man can't live on bread alone. He gotta have a helpmate. So let me make him a woman. That was our purpose. That's why we exist. We made from his rib. But you don't need him? Stop playing with me. You don't need him because you don't know better. And the government got you thinking that you okay without a man. But they women over there with men, they little kids going to college and going to Cancun on spring break and, and, and flying to Europe. They going all over the place. They got a family. But they telling us we don't need no man. And we starting to believe it. I don't need no man. That's what they want you to say. They want to lock our men up. Then, they want to lock our little black sons up. They're intimidated by the black male. Because they're chosen. They're kings. And until we start calling them kings, and treating them like kings, and help them find their greatness, we're going to keep perishing. Just take, just try this one day, ladies. Just please try this for me. And I ain't talking about y'all big mouth ass cussing me out right now, talking shit. Probably called all y'all friends. Y'all all probably watching me now. Hi, hi. I want y'all to listen. Try this. Call your baby dad that just, you just can't stand. This nigga ain't had a job. He he ain't been doing nothing, going in and out of jail. Call him and just say, you know what? I know we've been going through a lot. I know you ain't never been there for your kids. I, I know we hate each other. But I just want to tell you, I care enough to ask you, what do you need to get your life right? What can I do, my brother, to help you get your life right? Can I help you with a resume? Do you Are you not doing, living up to your potential because you don't think you're capable what is it? Can we sit down and talk? 
because maybe I can get you a job from my uncle, or maybe I can help you start your YouTube channel and talk about your life situations because people get mi becoming millionaires off telling their life stories. Maybe I can help you in some kind of way because if I help you be better, my little kid's going to be better. So what can I do as your friend to help you get your life right? And the same thing for me if you have a baby mama the same way. Stop being judgmental and say, what can we do to make our kids better? We hate each other. We probably cringe when we see each other. But when we come together and talk, can we think about our kids? Because we want our kids to prosper. We want our kids to be better than, what our, than our stupid asses was. We don't want our kids to go to prison. We don't want to bury our kids. We don't want them to be teen mamas and daddies like we did it. So can we just come together at least once a month and come up with a plan for our kids? Damn. We didn't hate each other when we were screwing. So come on, man. I'm hating you because you left me for a female man, really? So I'm going to punish my little kids because you gave a penis to somebody else. So now my kids got to suffer. And then I pretend, I, I, I don't like that nigga because he ain't no good. You're mad about the penis. Stop playing with me. You're mad about the penis. Because soon as you find out he was giving it to somebody else, you got mad. You didn't get mad when he was staying with you for free. You didn't get mad he was eating up your damn food stamps. You didn't get mad he wasn't paying no bills. You weren't, you weren't mad about nothing. You weren't getting mad that he come up there and watch you have your babies only to have a box of Pampers. You didn't get mad about none of that. You didn't get mad until he gave the penis to somebody else. Oh, you gave the penis away? Oh, Lord, it's hell to pay the captain. He the worst nigga in the world. You didn't even get mad when he was whooping your ass. You didn't get mad until he gave that penis away. But your bougie ass can't tell the truth. <laughs> you can't tell the truth. You don't like him because he ain't shit. Why you got four kids by him? For real? Why you got four kids by him? You know you a product of your environment. You attract what you are. So if you got four babies, even one, by a no good dude, one time in your life, you want shit. Because you attracted a no good ass person. And that goes for men too. Your baby mama crazy, Negro, because you was crazy once upon a time in your life. And you attracted this crazy ass heifer. That's why you, she crazy. She was crazy when you met her. Like attracts like. So y'all was magnetic. Uh, you in the club and all of a sudden your energy just just drags you over just drag you over to the craziest bitch in the damn room and that's you know y'all having unprotected sex and she got a baby and then you get all over the place man this bitch crazy she was crazy when you met her do y'all know when what dating is dating mean you get to know somebody they mean you really get to know somebody. You got to date people like you do a job interview. Y'all would go do a job interview and, do, and, and, and answer this. Do you go apply at a job that you're not qualified for? Like with me. Why would I go apply to be a carpenter or, or electrician and I'm not qualified? But you let somebody come in your life and they're not even qualified to be there. You know they're not qualified, but he cute. He's so cute. He's so fine. Not knowing this nigga a serial killer. Not knowing he's a he's damn Ted Bundy, Bundy nephew. You don't give a damn. Not knowing he's an R. Kelly up in there with your little girl. And then when your little kids, somebody do something to one of your little kids and they, they daddy tripping. Why you got this nigga up in the house with my kids? Are uh, you just hating on me? Nigga, baby on the news, you're looking stupid. How many of y'all know or heard of women, kids getting killed by their boyfriend? Because of the penis. They was dickmatized. They didn't see nothing else but the dick. I don't give a damn. And then y'all let them babysit y'all kids. Y'all let a grown men baby. You know when I did daycare, how I started losing money doing daycare and how they put a lot of home daycares out of business because a lot of these women start meeting these no good men that wouldn't work and allowed them to come in the house and be daycare. Daddy daycare. They ain't even they daddy. They ain't teaching the kids shit. They ain't feeding them. They smoking weed all day. The kids running wild. She at work. He got his boys playing video games all day and she giving the nigga the check. They took him out of my daycare when I was teaching them something. Oh, such and such go watch my kids now. We good. 
messed up home daycares. Because it ain't about your kids. Stop faking the funk. A lot of y'all buying y'all kids all this shit because y'all don't want to be bothered with them kids. The phone is a babysitter. That's why y'all want them to have the best technology. Keep they little ignorant ass busy because I'm in here with my dick. I don't want you to knock on my goddamn door. I will beat y'all ass disturbing me. For real, I, am I lying? For real, am I lying? How many of y'all grew up with that kind of mama? We get fucked up if you knocked on mama door when she had her dick up in there. Quit playing with me. And sometime a coochie. <laughs> it's, it's, it's mama's now beat your ass about a, a coochie. I'm just telling the truth. Y'all ain't, ain't loving them kids. They just a bunch of fixed up, looking like money, men, mentally messed up kids. Half these kids really need to go seek some help because they mama mentally tore them down. Then they confused because they don't know if I should love my daddy because my mama told me not to. And if I do, my mama going to be mad. And I love my mama. Should I Should I do this? Should I do it? They confused as hell. I don't want to turn on my mom, so I'm going to hate my daddy too. Even though my daddy never did nothing to me but love me. Mama told me he wants shit, so I believe her. So I got to do what mama say. You might be missing out on the best things in your life because of your dad. But your mom don't want you to go over his girlfriend's house. I wish he would take you around that bitch. But how many stepdaddies you didn't have? How many times your dad can tell your mama not to have you around um, Uncle Earl that's over there fixing the locks at 3 in the morning? Uncle Earl in here fixing something. Mm-hmm. All reliable. Trench coat. But soon as daddy get a woman, uh, you better not have my kids around that bitch. You would have had them kids around how many niggas? How many dudes they didn't seen with you? And then they fake the funk because they act like they like your kids, right? They playing with them. They take them to the park. They loving on them. They giving them whatever they want. As soon as y'all stop talking, he can see that nigga in the store. And he probably be like, get your little punk ass away from me. Faking. You don't even like your kids. They see you with a nice car, a good job, section eight. They in survival. I'm going to come up on this bitch. And y'all think they in love. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. Income tax season is over. The money gone. Watch how many black women get on here and be crying the blues. Black men ain't shit. And they do it every single year. Every year. Watch how many of them say black men ain't shit in the next month or so. This summer. Hot girl summer. You gonna see all these girl trips because they single now. Niggas ain't shit. It's about me and my bitches. Me and my bitches gonna be that ghetto ass shit. You're going to see them all in Cancun. You're going to see them all in the Bahamas. You're going to see them all in Miami. And they having a hot girl summer because they mad because they money go. And now the dick is gone over there. The dick is with wifey now. The one that he really like. The one that ain't got to have the money. The one that don't wear the makeup. He back at home now. <laughs> now you're going to have a hot girl summer. This your girl, Nina. I'm sorry y'all took so long. I wouldn't even plan on saying all this. I just shit just came from the dome. It just came from a real place. Because I'm so tired of women doing the shit they do. Y'all hate on each other nonstop. We don't encourage each other. I didn't try to have women's day. I didn't try to have women's breakfast. I didn't try to have a Friday night with ladies and we just have a discussion and record ourselves and try to share each other knowledge. Do you know how to sew? Well, we gonna have a sewing class on Thursday. You know how to cook? Well, we're gonna have a cooking class on Saturday. Um, you know how to pray, you know about God. We're gonna have a Bible study on Sunday night. So y'all can't do that. Y'all don't wanna share your knowledge. Oh, you know how to do real estate? I can't afford real estate classes. Can you have a class to teach us a little bit of real estate so when we do get in it, we know a little bit about it? You can't do that. I ain't showing them bitches what I know how to do. But guess what? I can go to a white girl. And she'll show me everything she know. I can go to a white lawyer right now, ask him to be my mentor, and he'll do it. These black lawyers... They'll let you go to jail knowing you innocent if you ain't got money. 
Instead of saying, you know what? I'm rich already. I've been in the game 40 some years. I know you're going through a lot. I know I can't do this for everybody, but I see I can help you a little bit. I can at least give you some advice or I can tell you what to do or I can help you pro bono because I'm not going to let you go to jail because you ain't got no money because you my sister. Hell no. They let you go to the penitentiary and do 20 years. Now you innocent because you didn't have $2,500. <laughs> Only black people. White people don't do that shit. Why y'all think white people don't go to jail? Why? Y'all yeah, yeah, think they special? No, they take up for each other. They look out for each other. They gonna fight for each other. We the only ones do dumbass shit. But this your girl, y'all. Nina from Breakable Strong Woman. If y'all don't like my videos, y'all think I'm stupid. Y'all don't like what I had to say. Like I said, if it don't apply, let it fly. If you're not one of them females, good for you. God bless you. Let it fly over your head. I ain't talking about you. Because there's a lot of good women. There's a whole lot of good women. There's a lot of women that don't play about their kids. They would kick their kids' ass. There's a whole lot of good mamas. But I'm talking about these new age mamas that think it's more important to look cute than put your feet on your kid's neck and beat their ass. I'm talking about them kind of mamas. It's more important to have a nigga in your house than pay for your kids to go to tutoring. You'll buy a nigga some, some weed and some drink and your kids need some tutoring. You ready for them to have an iPhone 25 and they can't even spell or read? That's what I'm talking I'm talking about them kind of mamas. Your kids in special education. For why? Have you tried to teach them? I bet y'all kids, y'all don't even teach y'all kids about black history. And the schools don't even teach it no more. I asked one of these kids one time, I ain't gonna say his name, who was Dr. King? You know what he said? And he when he won the presidents, I just walked away. I said, now see, that's a damn shame. You don't even know who. What, what, what the hell is going on? Is these kids crap? I would have hit them in the throat. But I had to remember, you can't do better or know better if you ain't taught. Do y'all ever hear them talk about black history in February anymore at school? We used to have a whole black history month of programs. They don't do it no more. You know why? Because y'all ain't going to them schools and making them. Like our mamas did. Oh, you going to tell them what we went through, goddammit. Our parents didn't play. Oh, you gonna teach these kids? They taking slavery out of school. They don't even want the, the um, history of slavery. They don't even want the kids to know slavery ever existed. They say it's too traumatic for kids to know that. No, you hiding your secret, sir. You don't want these kids to know what you did to black people. So you ashamed. So you try to take it out the schools. You don't want them to know that you used to lynch and kill people and have a celebration on Friday night. You don't want them to know you the devil. And ain't nobody saying that. Y'all know in Florida, they, don't, they took it out to schools. It is headed this way. They took our black history. They took, first, they took our God. That's where they went wrong. That's when our kids went to the pit of hell. They, they just going to hell. They took our God. Then they took our black history. And you know what they replaced it with? Homosexuality. <laughs> they teaching that now. They teaching you how to be gay. How you gonna teach somebody how to be gay if they say they was born gay? So should do do they have a class to teach you how to be a man or a woman? No. They have one, I think, a couple weeks about the birds and the bees. But they don't teach you how to manage a, a, a checkbook, how to go get your license, how to do real estate, how to be a responsible adult. But they teach you how to be gay. Should kids even be talking about sex? To me, ain't that's um, what do you call it? pedophilia y'all talking about sex to little kids ain't that that borderline pedophilia you you shouldn't tell a little boy it's okay for another little boy johnny it's okay for tommy to put his penis in your behind and that's okay with y'all kids can be what they want to be well let them you ain't got to teach their ass let them let them grow into what they want to be you learn by seeing and hearing. So if you're hearing this all the time and you're seeing it, now you're going to believe it's okay. So guess what y'all got to do, mama and daddy? Y'all got to stop sleepovers because you're going to walk in the room and, and little Johnny and Earl going to be screwing each other because they think it's okay. That's the thing a boy no more. They ain't playing video games no more. They doing some sex shit. So y'all got to stop these sleepovers. Walk in and your daughter's doing 69 on each other. And I'm for real. Because y'all saying it's okay. 
My teacher said ain't nothing wrong with us to do it. Let's try it. And let's see how it feel. You know what we learned in school, so it's okay. But y'all don't argue with me and say I'm homophobic. You homophobic. You wrong because my son gay. I have one of the girls I grew up with. My son is gay. I can't believe you say that's your son. My son ain't gay, thank God. That's your son. And you're supposed to love your son, yes. But I have my own opinion. What happened to somebody having freedom of speech and their own opinion? You can't tell me how to think. Y'all rather for me to go against God and go by what the world say? T Nina, forget everything you read about the word of God. Forget what God said, because I don't think God meant it that way. Even though he said it's an abomination, forget all that. And you go with the world, because if you don't, you're going to lose everything. When I was living right, when I tried to live right, when I tried to talk to women, I still got punished. And I know as long as I'm living by the grace of God and trying to live up to my best potential and, and had a fear of God, I'm covered by the blood, baby. So I don't care what the world got to say because ain't nothing going to happen to me that God don't want to happen. If it happens, that's God's will and his will must be done. But I'm going to walk in his grace and his mercy and praise him every day of my life because he don't want to give me breath. He don't want to give me life. The world didn't give me this joy so the world can't take it away. I'm not worried about nobody in this world i'm not worried about my record i'm not worried about my housing i'm not worried about my children because i know the god i serve i buried six people in 18 months and i'm talking to y'all with a sound mind when i thought i would die when i had to bury my mama when god brought me through that i can get over anything especially a man you hear me but let me go. I keep saying this your girl. This is your girl, Nina from Breakable Strong Woman. I love you all and I hope y'all learned something today. And I hope if y'all one of these women that's doing this shit, that you get a wake up call today. I hope you learned something out this video besides Nina, a dumbass bitch, and I'm tired of her, but you just watched me for a damn hour. You ain't got shit else to do. <laughs> I'll talk to y'all later. Peace. Go pray somewhere for real.